These are the highest probability plays for today's slate. This is the Daily Profit brought to you by Linemaker Sports. I'm Frank with Linemaker Sports. On today's show, we're going to go through the highest probability plays throughout the whole entire slate. we got a lot of stuff going on, so make sure you guys stick around. Always stick around to the end as well. But before we get to that, let's talk about yesterday's results. All right. Yesterday's results, the ones that I got posted here are just a little bit of what we talked about. But we actually went 5-0 and on those hitters yesterday. All right, Every single one of the hitters that we had on the show ended up getting a hit, and they were all in the same game. So congrats to everybody if you guys followed along with all that. I think two of those hitters ended up getting home runs, actually. I think it was Fernando Tatis and uh, Pete Alonso. So let's talk about some of the ones on here. Like I just said, Trey Turner, he had a 72% probability to get a hit. That one was really no sweat. I think he got it in his second at bat, so that one was good. Michael King is the lone one that actually didn't do too well for us. All right, even though he had a 76% probability, he's going against the mighty Dodgers, who uh, ended up tagging him on a three-run homer. All right, and he ended up giving up. I think he ended up giving up four or five earned. All right, and I think three three innings in the third inning that happened. So, not too good of a performance from Michael King. Uh, Fernando Tatis, like we said, he had a 72% probability he ended up hitting a home run. So that was clutch for him. And then David Pasternak for the Boston Bruins came up in the last minute and scored a goal to actually get us over that 0.5 point threshold. So that one was probably the sweatiest one on the slate for sure because it didn't look like he was going to get a score, an assist, or anything throughout the whole entire game. And then right there at the end with about a minute left, he ends up getting one through the net, all right, for us to end up hitting that one. So overall, very solid day yesterday throughout every single play that I put out pretty much on the show, all right? And then also in college football, we had that Quinton Cooley who ended up going off. I think he had like 170 rushing yards. We only needed him to go over 75. He had that, I think, in the first half almost. So very, very nice uh day yesterday going through everything so let's go ahead and let's jump into today all right we're gonna start with baseball we'll start with ranger suarez all right ranger suarez he has a 59.25 percent chance to go under two and a half earned runs now that jumps all the way up to 80 percent when he's going against better teams so when he's going against the top 10 batting teams in the league he rises to the occasion he he plays better all right But his last outing, he only pitched two innings, and he gave up six earned. All right, and that was about 10 days ago, I think it was. About 10 days ago from his last last start. So he actually hasn't pitched in a a decent amount of time there, 10, 11 days. So his last outing gave up six. But overall, you know, hopefully he still has a chance to go under that two and a half earned runs. Me, I don't like his overall number at 59.25%. I don't prefer that. I don't like being in the 60, under under 60s. Now, of course, you have to factor in who he's playing. So when you factor in who he's playing, that percentage does jump up. But uh, for me, eh, it's a little bit too much inconsistency there between overall and going against top teams and not really liking the last outing that he was out and only pitched two innings. All right, so let's move on to the next one here. Dylan Cease. Uh, we had Dylan Cease on the show, what, five days ago, I think. I mean, he was going against the Dodgers, and he gave up five earned. He got knocked around by the Dodgers. So we're going right back here again where he's facing the Dodgers again. But overall, he has a 51.25% chance to go under two and a half ru- earned runs, and that drops all the way to 37% now against top 10 batting teams. All right, so possible fade alert on Dylan Cease. All right. Speaking of fate alerts, um, Sean Manea yesterday, we were thinking about a fate alert on Sean Manea. He actually went out there and pitched basically a gem. All right. So he ended up surprising everybody, even with those terrible percentages. So you never know what's going to happen. It's playoff baseball. All right. Some people are going to rise to the occasion. Some people are going to get knocked around. Big, big name pitchers might get rocked, knocked around while other pitchers might go out there and pitch gems. That's playoff baseball for you. But Dylan Cease, like I said, him against the Dodgers' is track record is not too good. All right, so possible fade alert for Dylan Cease today. Now let's get to Jose Quintana. All right, we had Jose Quintana on the show, I think, 
five days ago. All right. And he ended up actually pitching a gem where he was possibly on the fate alert as well because his percentages weren't that good. All right. But they were decent, but they weren't that good. So his percentages went up a little bit. 60% overall for under two and a half earned runs and 68% against the top 10 batting teams. So when he goes against better pitching, I mean, excuse me, when he goes against better hitters, he ends up pitching pretty decent. All right, and that showed in his last outing where he went six and didn't, he looked lights out, honestly, in that last, that last outing. He looked really, really good. All right, but again, with me, both those numbers need to line up for me to end up playing them. All right, both percentages. If, they, if it's too big of a differential, I'm kind of, eh, it's a little inconsistent for me. All right, but overall, 60%. 68% against the top 10. Not too bad. All right, not too bad. That's always an option there. Now, let's get to Seth Lugo. He's another one that we had last week on the show. His percentage uh, it went up after that last performance that he had. All right, it went up a little bit. Not too much, though. 74% under 2.5 earned runs and 54% under 2.5 earned runs versus the top 10 batting. So, it's a bit of a 50-50 mark there for his under 2.5 earned runs against the top 10 batting teams. His last outing, he didn't pitch too long, but he only gave up one run. All right, he pitched pretty good. All right, decently, I'll say. His pitch count, I think, was up there a little bit high. That's why they ended up pulling him. But uh, he only gave up one earned run. I don't like that inconsistency again. Like I said, you know, you go from 74% down to 54%. That's a 20% swing there for going against uh, better batting teams. So it's kind of up in the air. It's one of those 50-50 plays pretty much for Seth Lugo. So again, take it for you know what I tell you guys. All right, you make your own decision on some of these plays. Like I said, I don't play every single one of them. All right, but you know the ones I do play are the ones that have the higher percentile and the ones that make more sense and they're not inconsistent. All right, but I give you guys this information so that way you guys can make the decision for yourselves as well. All right, I just provide the information for you. Now let's get to some players instead of pitchers. All right. We got Francisco Alvarez, who has a 67% chance to go under 0.5 runs scored, which means he can't cross the plate. All right, if he doesn't cross the plate, you win that bet. If he gets a hit, doesn't matter. He just has to cross the plate. All right, so if he does not cross the home plate, then you can win that bet. He's batting 147 versus Suarez. All right, so doesn't bat too well against Suarez. So the ideal, you know. The idealistic, you know, mindset behind looking at like a play like this is pretty much if they don't bat well against the pitcher, well, then they're probably not going to get a hit, meaning they're not going to get on base as long as they don't get walked. As long as they, if they don't get on base, they're not going to be able to score. All right. So that's the, you know, idea behind going and betting the under run scored prop. All right. Let's get to our next one here, which is going to college football. All right, college football. Like I said last night, he had a pretty good running back who could have bet over 150 plus, and he ended up surpassing that. Tonight we have a quarterback, Tyler Huff, for Jacksonville State. All right, he's 62.5 percent to go over 60 plus rushing yards. All right, and he has it drops a little bit, not too much. Drops a little bit when he goes against similar defenses that he's going to be facing against New Mexico State is who they're playing. And that drops to 60% for him to go over 60 plus. All right. Jacksonville State, another heavy run team. So most of their plays involve running the ball. They're one of the top in the nation for running the ball, as in play wise. And the QB, he averages anywhere from like 10 to 12 carries a game. All right. So he has a good opportunity to go over that 60 plus tonight. They're like 20 point favorites. So they should put up some points. They should be able to get some yardage being 20-plus point favorites. All right? But like I said, when it comes down to college football, some states you, can, you can't bet on college football props. If you can't, eh, it is what it is. You, I mean, you could use an offshore book if you, if you ultimately want to place those bets. But it's just like that in some states. All right? If you can't do it, you can't do it. It is what it is. All right? There's plenty of other stuff to go to. Now, so the good stuff, I got an 83% NHL hockey play, a 70% under run scored prop to go along with that other run scored prop, and a 70% hitter to get a hit. If you guys want those, make sure you guys click the link in the description. 
all right those are posted in my group all right on the app i post all that stuff on there so let's go through everybody else once again all right ranger suarez again bit inconsistent there we're 59 percent overall to go under two and a half but jumps all the way up to 80 percent against the top 10 batting teams just inconsistent all right i mean i would ideally want those numbers to be more closer together the last outing he got rocked so take it for what it is with that all right dylan cease he's been terrible against the dodgers and he's going against the dodgers again he pitched against the dodgers last outing gave up five He's possibly on our fate alert for the slate. Jose Quintana, he was part of our fate alert last time he pitched, but guess what? He went out there and pitched a gem and gave up zero earned in six innings. And he's in that range to where you can consider him. All right, 60%, 68%, you know, against the top 10 batting teams to go under two and a half earned runs. So definitely a possibility there. And Seth Lugo, again, with the inconsistency, I don't really like the 20% differential there between the overall under earned runs and against the top 10 batting. All right. His last outing, though, he did decent. All right. He didn't pitch too long, but he only gave up one earned. Now let's talk about Clark Schmidt. Clark Schmidt, his last outing kind of got rocked a little bit. All right. Uh, 68% overall, but that drops to 60. I don't really like when it drops when they go against better batting teams. I just don't really like that. All right, the numbers are a little bit closer, but it just shows that when the better competition comes in, he doesn't pitch as well. All right, and then Francisco Alvarez, he has a 67% chance to go under uh, 0.5 runs scored, means he can't cross the plate. Those are These are always good options because it's hard enough just to get on base to get a hit. And for them to cross the plate, it's pretty hard as well. So those are always good plays regardless. And then in college football, we got Tyler Huff, the quarterback for Jacksonville State. For him to go over 60-plus rushing yards, pretty decent there. I know the percentage is low. I mean, it's down to pretty much 60%. And I always say, you know, those are the ones where you're like, eh, I might do it, I might not. But they are 20-point favorites, and they are going against New Mexico State, which is one of the worst at defending the rush and Jacksonville State most of their plays involve running so he should get some type of yardage all right and he averages around 10 to 12 carries a game so he should have a good opportunity to get 60 plus there all right and then like I said guys I got three plays in the group one's 83 percent 170 and the other one is 70 percent as well if you guys want those ones make sure you go click the link in the description if you guys want me to teach you exactly how I come up with these probabilities because people keep asking I teach and I coach everybody one-on-one -on -one as well how to come up with these money lines, totals, spreads, all that good stuff. So make sure you guys click the link in the description and check that out. As always, guys, this is The Daily Profit. I'm Frank with Linemaker Sports. I'll see you guys in the next show. Till then, I'm out.